So I don't know if you know who this is. She was a cheap legal person for the Twitter. We've talked about her before on the show. She's a big censorer and she's a liar. And she lied on Joe Rogan about stuff. We caught her in lies. And uh, she pretended not to know uh, that the people who were pushing uh, Russiagate, uh, who actually got caught making up stuff, uh, she pretended that that didn't happen and they didn't exist. Uh, Twitter's top lawyer, who angered conservatives with her past decision about moderating content, cried when discussing the Elon Musk purchase with employees, a report says. Now, why do I show you this? Because Sagar and Jetty tweeted this out. Now, you know Sagar from um, Breaking Point. So her name is Viaya Gadi. I don't know how, how you pronounce her name. So that woman who's a lawyer from Twitter. The top censorship advocate at Twitter who famously gaslit the world on Joe Rogan's podcast and censored the Hunter Biden laptop story is very upset about the Elon Musk takeover. And he tweets out his story where she cried. Elon Musk responds to this. Elon Musk responds and says, suspending the Twitter account of a major news organization for publishing a truthful story was obviously incredibly inappropriate. Now, that sounds like a completely appropriate tweet. He's not even mentioning anyone's name. He's not targeting harass. He's not doing anything. And by the way, she's a super public, powerful person who's been who's, who's worth millions of dollars, who's been censoring the shit out of people. Guess what happened? Uh, two days into Musk buying Twitter, he's using his megaphone to help target Twitter employees. That's how they are couching this. That this tweet is now targeting Twitter employees. Uh, prompting a barrage of attacks, including racist ones, from his fans. Twitter workers have repeatedly asked management for protection from this scenario. Do you see how this, do you see the scumbags these people are? Do you see why no one takes accusations of racism fucking real like they should anymore? Because you guys use it in such a bullshit way. <laughs> nothing he did and nothing Sagar and Jetty did this is what news people do. They report on the news. That's what he's doing. He's reporting a news article. And Elon Musk is, re is commenting on a policy set by one of the most powerful people in the world when it comes to censorship. That He's not punching down. He's talking about a policy of a social media company. He didn't even mention anybody's name. And what do they do? They immediately go, he's a racist. Do I tell, show you this is their flex? If they don't like you, you're a racist and a misogynist. And then you're alt-right. So they also say he's alt-right. That's the, that's the whole thing. So, and who is, so who is this poor little woman that's being picked on by Elon Musk not mentioning her? <laughs> Here's who she is. She's Twitter's top attorney and a key voice in decisions such as barring President Trump from the platform. That's who she is. She's not a shrinking violet victim. She's an inflictor of pain and censorship. She became emotional and cried in a meeting with employees discussing Elon Musk's acquisition of the platform on Monday. Political, Politico reported it. She's Twitter's head of legal policy and trust is said to have played a large role in content moderation. She also advised former CEO Jack Dorsey and helped negotiate the deal between Musk and Twitter. On Monday, Gade met virtually with employees she supervises in legal and policy to discuss the buy. She acknowledged that there are significant uncertainties about what the company will look like under Musk's leadership, the outlet wrote, citing three people familiar with the meeting. The people told Political that she cried while relaying concerns about changes to Twitter. Former employees have said that they don't feel Musk's ethos matches the company's values, even though the former guy, Dorsey, embraced the buy. Any sense that an exodus is building is correct, said former Twitter employee, told the insider. Musk has remained bullish on free speech, tweeting on Tuesday that the platform shouldn't moderate anything that isn't against the law. That's my position, too. Twitter's policies extend far beyond that penalizing certain content that spreads coronavirus-related misinformation, as well as various types of hate speech. 
The free speech concern is often cited by conservatives who have celebrated must buy and have long felt that Twitter discriminates against right wing views, especially after it deplatformed Trump. So they're trying to make this seem like this is only pisses off crazy people you already hate. Trump and Trump supporters, not everybody else, not people like me or Max or Glenn Greenwald or, you know, uh, anybody who cares about free speech on the left. Gotti was a driver behind the decision CNN business reported in 2021, as did others at the time it occurred. So she was all about deplatforming the president. The attorney's job involves deciding when content can be taken down. And she's been referred to as Twitter's moral authority. So she's not some little kid. She's not a victim. And then Washington Post came at both of them. The Washington Post came at Sagar and Jenny over that. Do you want to see this? He says, the Washington Post says, I did not immediately respond to a request for comment. That's complete BS. They emailed my producer at two o'clock in the morning, seven hours after Elon Musk replied to my tweet with the following ridiculous questions. You want to see what the questions were? Uh, uh, the Twitter executive I mentioned literally went on the Joe Rogan experience and is therefore the definition of a public figure. My criticism of her for a policy she publicly has defended is in no way responsible for what some rando account may say to her. And so this is what the Washington Post asked. We are quickly writing up his tweets tonight about Vanya Gade with the peg that Musk is piling on to some of them. Some questions. Number one, does he have any concern that mentioning a specific Twitter executive could result in attacks on that executive? What? You're you're afraid that a a powerful public figure being named by a journalist on Twitter is going to is somehow bad and a threat and dangerous. Holy shit. The second one is what are the responsibilities here? For example, one of the commenters on the tweets made racist comments against Gade and others said she should be fired. His responsibility is fucking zero. Randos say crazy shit all the time. What does he hope to accomplish by calling out Gade and going and getting Elon involved as if he did this, as if he told Elon (laughs) Musk to fucking come get involved in this? He just made a tweet. Uh... Furthermore, I had no idea Elon Musk would reply. Accusing me of bringing him in is insane. What was I hoping to accomplish? What does anyone hope to accomplish when sending a fucking tweet? This is a great example of how the media smears you. I make a substantive point. Rando say something, and now myself and Elon Musk are somehow racist and responsible for them. All to cover up the fact that they substantively agree with censorship. That's what this is all about. They agree with censorship. And so now they're going to call you a racist and a misogynist, which is what they always do now, which is why it doesn't fucking work anymore. And I, they're going to accuse Sagar and Elon of sexual harassment in about five seconds. Max Blumenthal is with us from the Gray Zone. And I want to remind everybody, you can come see me do the stand-up comedy in Kansas City, Des Moines, Las Vegas, and Omaha. Coming up very soon. Go to jimmydorkcomedy.com for a link for tickets. Max, let me bring you in from the gray zone. What do you make of this bizarre situation? Well, I, on our last segment, pointed out that there's a lot to be worried about with Elon Musk, from his union busting to his practices at his companies where he's relied on massive amounts of government subsidies while pushing libertarianism, his support for transhumanism, which represents one of the greatest threats to human freedom. Uh, He even has a a startup called Neuralink, which aims to kind of transform the human brain into or or or, um, enhance the human brain and cognitive abilities with smartwatch type functions, Um, all kinds of things to be concerned about. None of these are being discussed by the opponents of his purchase of Twitter. And instead, what we're getting is a discussion about hate and the consequences of Elon Musk's trolling. And I got to say, like, it's pretty satisfying to see him piss off 
all the professional hall monitors and snitches and censorious little shills who have been going after us for years, trying to get us kicked off that platform because we've been interrupting their objectives. Um, they are just like the worst people on the planet. And I'm happy to see them get so upset about this. And I'm happy to see Twitter executives get upset because of Twitter censoring people, not for hate, but for being anti-war, for being anti-imperialist, for getting in the way of the re the new, the whole Russia-Ukraine uh, propaganda <clears throat> blitz that's being shoved down our throats. And here we have a situation where the truth is being obfuscated by this narrative about hate and abuse and safety and bullying where both of these tweets, uh, there was a tweet by Mike Cernovich, who's a right winger, and Sagar and Jetty, who's sort of like, you know, one of these sort of a populist right pundit. Uh, and the underlying substance of their tweet was factual yes. and raised substantial points that go to the heart of what is wrong with Twitter and why Elon Musk has been so successful in his trolling campaign and why he is seeking to buy it. First, Vijaya Gadi. She is a censorship advocate inside Twitter who was on Joe Rogan's podcast. I actually read, I've, I've, I've watched like clips from this sort of famous episode from 2019 where she's in there with Rogan and Tim Pool and, she, and she's debating him and they're peppering her with questions about um, Twitter's policies on content moderation and she doesn't really have many answers and she's kind of like rattling off statistics to show how you know they're protecting people from suicide by banning other users um opened up a huge can of worms but then she proceeded to basically ban discussion of hunter biden's laptop which was designed to impact the election i mean i think that story if it had been out more prominently, I think there are polls supporting this would have uh, would have impacted the outcome of the election. It, and it was a true story. Like we know now that it was not Russian disinformation that Hunter Biden's laptop contained all of this dirt and that, you know, it's very hard to find a photograph of Hunter Biden not smoking crack in the nude. Um, then you have Cernovich's tweet where he says Twitter lawyer Jim Baker and general counsel of the FBI personally arranged a meeting between the FBI and Michael Sussman. In this meeting, Sussman presented fabricated evidence in the Alpha Bank matter. And then he, you know, he tweeted it at Elon Musk, who then wrote, Musk said, sounds pretty bad. So it does sound pretty bad. It is. I didn't know that the FBI's <laughs> former lawyer is inside. I actually didn't know this was inside the Twitter, that he's like Twitter's you mean Chief the, counsel? The you mean and then Clinton's, he arranged, form, Clinton's former lawyer or the FBI's former lawyer? The F, so Baker is the former general counsel of the FBI. Oh, and really? And he's now representing Twitter. Oh. And he helped on behalf of the FBI arrange the meeting with Michael Sussman, no, who is yeah. the Clinton lawyer for Perkins Coy, I think, which was like yes, the that's front the, they were using. Yes. And, and he what planted they wanted the Russiagate story with the FBI, and now he's being charged for that. Right. Sussman is being charged <clears throat> And the, this was the Alpha Bank story, mm -hmm. which uh, claimed that Trump had transaction was, you know, yeah. running lucrative transactions through a Russian bank, Alpha Bank. Uh, Lawrence O'Donnell humiliated himself on That's national right. TV, pushing this story. He but had it, to publicly it, we, apologize for it. Right. And we learn it was planted. And so it, it, it's, it should be concerning that Twitter's lawyer was involved in this fiasco, which was one of the most heinous examples of disinformation. But I guess if you're against Trump, you're supposed to justify it because the ends always seem to justify the means when it comes to Russiagate. In any case, you have two instances where you have two tweets that are fundamentally true by Sagar and Jenny and Mike Cernovich, two people I like generally dis I disagree with them on a lot of things, but the tweets are just true. You have to be objective. And Elon Musk is responding to them to obviously troll to troll censorious liberals and now he's being attacked for spreading hate because he responded favorably to two tweets that were true about corruption the systematic corruption of twitter and so we've 
we've lost sight of what the real issue is here, which is Twitter is not a legitimate platform for political discussion anymore. Right. It is a political tool of the national security state and the dominant wing of the US political establishment, which is sort of like the center, center right, center left, the uniparty. And that's what this exposes. We're doing live stand-up shows in Cleveland, Columbus, Pittsburgh, Des Moines, Omaha, Kansas City, Las Vegas, all over the country. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for tickets. And single tickets now available at all venues. So if you tried to buy one before and you couldn't, single tickets are now available. Plus, while you're at JimmyDoreComedy.com, why don't you become a premium member? Sign up to our mailing list so when they cancel us, we can still stay in touch. Mm -hmm. 